Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of uh, Ableton Live Beginners Course. In this episode, we are going to focus on audio, everything that has to do with audio. So unlike any other digital audio workstation, the music in lives remains elastic at all times. Live is capable of time warping sample while streaming them from your hard drive and synchronize them to the current live set tempo. This happens without affecting the pitch, which can be changed independently. So in my case, um, which we saw in previous episode, the difference between audio and MIDI. So to enter an audio sample, you just uh, insert an audio track and there are two ways to insert audio. One is uh, from your computer browser, from a uh, live browser, sorry, which is this column here. Um, this section called places means that uh, you can add a folder of your computer, for example here, and you can add it in here. And you can just take any sample and drag and drop it. Another way is by going to your computer sample and just drag and drop them here. So here I have a few examples of audio clips, which uh, we're going to go through one by one. And we're going to see the various methods of, of live warping tempo. So live ability to play any sample in sync with the chosen tempo is a unique and important feature that made live very popular at first compared to other programs. In addition, you can warp the rhythmic flow of a piece, changing its feel or even move notes to other meter position. So here we have a, a sample, which is a beat. When the warp switch is off, which is here, so this is the warp switch of Ableton Audio, uh, live plays the audio at its original tempo. So if I switch off the warp of this particular piece of audio, you can hear that this is the original tempo that has been recorded. But when I put the warp back on, it's playing at 122 BPM, which is my tempo of my project. Alternatively, I can slow down the tempo and live will retain the same quality, the same pitch of the sample and can I speed up as well. And let's go back to 120 BPM. When you first load the sample into live, live automatically analyzes the audio and find its transients. The transient are points in the audio where notes or events begin and are usually good places to put warp markers. The transients are those things. So this is a transient, the kick drum is a transient, the snare is a transient. So all those sounds that has a very strong impact, like live detect them into the tempo of, this, of the audio and will place those markers here. In this case, when I put the metronome on, Live was able to detect the tempo of the sample and fix it in the grid of my current audio sample. There will be time where this is not gonna be possible because it's slightly difficult. So let's see here, for example. You can hear that Ableto Live was enabled to detect precisely the beginning of this loop. But towards the end, yes. So in this case, what I have to do here, I can see that the first beat, it's not starting at one. So what I'm gonna have to do, usually to understand how to warp sample, the number one, it's where the first kick drum would stay. Then the... 1.2, it's the first snare. 1.3 will be the second kick and 1.4 will be the second snare. And the number two is the second bar. So this loop is made of four bars. One, two, three, and four. So this is a four bar loop. But I can tell that here it's not really on time. So what I can do here, when I press when I do double click, I can enter a, a, a marker and I can move the audio 
making it elastic. So that's the elastic audio concept of Ableton Live that was introduced. So if I play now the sample, see, it's stretching out like an elastic piece of audio and then accumulated here. So let's undo this action. Let's undo again. So now what we wanna do, we wanna put the first kick into the number one. So to do this, as you can see here, there is a, a really a, a marker that, or, or that live entered. So what I can do is just to take this one and just slightly here so that the first kick drum will be here. So now the first kick is fixed in the grid. But I can see that towards the end, from here to here, it's not much anymore on time. It's losing the grip. So what I have to do here, I just have to enter a warp marker here so that this won't be afflicted. Because if I'm moving here, you see this, this part here, it's going to be locked. So, so I have to put this one here, the transit under the number three. And now it's on time. Now it's perfect on time. Let's go for a much more difficult example. And let's take another sample. This is a song that a friend of mine gave me the other day. Let's listen. With the metronome on, of course. So as you can hear, it's really messed up. This has to do with the audio quality because uh, it was an MP3 with you know low quality and, and also it's uh, quite complex, the drum as well. So in this case, Ableton is not really precise that can recognize everything. In, in some complex drums, it's much more difficult. So we need to work this and to make it sound on time with the metronome. So we can use the logic here. Um, and again, you know, the more you will warp audio, the better you will understand how it works. So this is the intro and uh, the first kick of the track, it will be here. So, oops, I just entered by mistake, so. So I can see that here there is the number 13. Usually the 13, 14, 15, 16 are where the first kicks should enter in every bar. So let's zoom in and let's move this kick drum on the number 13 and start from here. I can see that now it's a, a bit more on tempo following the metronome. Let's move this one here. I always look at the transients. And as I see the transient, I try to make them under each bar. Now, for example, from here to here, it's been corrected. So there's no problem at here. But if I go here, if I go a bit more forward down, so here it's out of track. So let's play the track from here. Let's open this. I just put one marker here to be safe. Let's go a bit more forward down. Okay, so here is losing it. So I have to go here. Yeah, this transit to go here. Here, start to lose. Yeah. So I just look at those, I just look at the transient basically, and I place them under each marker. Yeah, so you can feel that now. Okay. So there will be cases when you insert audio in Ableton Live that not always Ableton is able to, to identify uh, the right synchronization with the metronome and the tempo. So now that my track is being corrected, I can slow down and it will be always 
is sync with the main tempo. But obviously this is an extreme example, which is uh, very complex, but there were, you know, like I have a track of mine, for example, and here, more easy. Although the, the kick drum is not really under the right tempo. So in this case, very simple. So this is a snare, the snare should be under 25.4. Boom. And now it's right on time. If I go towards the end, because this is a dance floor track, it's a sort of electro, there is a strong kick drum, a strong snare, so Abel is able to, to, to understand where it goes. So this is how you warp audio to Ableton live tempo. Another two things that uh, I wanted to show you in, in the audio, it's gain and pitch, which are present in every pieces of audio that you are inserting in your track. So if I play my track, the gain, it's the volume. So I can reduce the gain here and have more here, or I can have more gain in the track and less volume. That is um, gain staging. Then I have a pitch control. So pitch control, it's, uh, it's transposing down. or transposing up the pitch. So this is present in every pieces of audio that you will insert in Ableton Live. So now that we have explored how to warp a sound and uh, the various algorithm in the audio, now let's come back to our song that we were doing in the previous uh, episodes. Let's run with this one. So now we have a, a, a sample that I like that I just found in my library and I really like it in the song, so let's play it. It sounds good with the song. There are essentially two ways to put this one here. So the first one would be to click with the mouse, hold it and drag and drop it to the arrangement view and then press this button to confirm live that we are working now in here. But I can, I can see that I cannot loop this audio clip. It's just kind of locked in itself. So to, to have these pieces of audio looped and extended until here, I can do one thing. So each clip of audio has this bar on top. This bar, it's um, the loop bar. When, when this is on, when this is containing the beginning and the end, and I loop this, you can see that uh, it's switched on, which means that when I go here, I can basically extend my pieces of audio and I can have it played in a loop. Which is okay, it's nice. But there is one thing here that I can say that here there is a bit of silence between the beginning. So I want to extend this bit here without affecting the rest. So I just click in here. I set these warp markers so that from here to here, nothing will be changed if I move this one here. And that's what I wanted. So now let's play the track. Another things I can do, since we've been talking about automation in the previous episodes, I can also write automation inside my audio clip. Audio clip. So automation, it's this button here. So envelopes. So this is the clip envelope, which is everything that has to do with the clip. Then there are various uh, effects inside my channel. Because if I go to my channel here, I have a reverb and I have an equalizer. So when I click here, I have a reverb and an equalizer. And mixer, it's basically the mixer here. So I want to change something inside the clip and I want the gain of the clip to start fade in and not like this. So what I will do, I just set a marker here and I will do this. So now you will hear the sound. Let's play in solo. So 
So this is not playing, it's fading it on the volume. And I can do the same here, fade out. I can also transpose the sample. So to transpose, I can go to, to zero, this is the zero. And I can use the pen and do this job. And it's not gonna sound very pleasant because I'm basically modifying the pitch of the sample. Quite unpleasant to, to hear. Let's go back to our game here and just with the pen, you know, you can also draw obviously the, the sample. So yeah, basically this is how to manipulate audio, how to warp it and how to put it in the track. And the same concept of um, the songwriting structure that I was doing before, it's the same. I can take this, I can copy and I can go here and I can paste it and I can do all sorts of uh, modification. I can uh, split it and move it here like before, basically. So this is the episode number five, how to work in audio.